Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello. Welcome to episode 100. 78 of Wise Advice. And again, always an honor to be here with you. Want to take a moment to just thank all of you for continuing to check in. You know, I see all of your all your tags, your comments, your likes, and all over social media, and you're sharing it. And uh, what you're doing is you're building a community of people who want to completely change their life, and you're leading the charge. So thanks for being here. Out of the gate, out of Southboro, Massachusetts, Candy writes in, says, Hi, Fat Dag. I've been struggling with my weight and my body image my whole life. I joined Weight Watchers back in July with my husband. This is the third or fourth time that I have joined. This time has been very different, and you have been a big part of why it is different. I listen to your podcast, and I love it when you say, weight loss has nothing to do with luck. It has everything to do with focus. That is such a true statement. This time, I've been able to stay focused and has made all the difference in the world. I am writing today because I am so excited to report that I have reached Wonderland. I have not seen a one as the first number of my weight in 16 years. I started this journey at 276 pounds, which is the highest that I've ever been. This morning, I stepped on the scale and I saw 196.6. I still have a ways to go to reach my goal of 140 pounds, but I know I can do it. I am so proud of how far I've come. I am so proud of myself for focusing on taking care of myself. Thank you, Fat Dag, for everything that you do for all of us on this journey. I wish you good focus, Candy. Candy, congratulations. Uh, One of the things that we do around here is we actually rename you. When you hop on the scale and the first number on the scale shows up as a one for the very first time, we rename you to Alice. You're now Alice in Wonderland. Congratulations on that amazing accomplishment. You're absolutely right. It took a lot of focus to get there. You can't hop on the scale and hope for it to go down. You actually have had to do the work, focus, pay attention, and get it done, and that is what the reward is. That's when the scale shows up. The scale shows you the one as the first number, Alice, way to go. Now, let's talk about your opening. You say you struggle with your weight and your body image your whole life. I understand the concept behind that. You join Weight Watchers with your husband back in July for the third or fourth time. The reason you joined for the third or fourth time is because you know the program works. You wouldn't continue to pay something. You wouldn't rejoin a program that you didn't believe worked. So the two of you get back in in July. You join, you focus, you're better together. You're dialed in. You understand that this time is different. This time you understand that you have to stay focused on your goal. You have to wake up every single day mindful of what the goal is and working hard to accomplish it. Now, certainly, as you know, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to understand what the big picture is. You have to understand what the prize is. And at that point, you have to go after it. Now, I, I know exactly how you're feeling. And, and you have to be at that point where, where you feel really good. I love in the back of the, at the end of your email where you say, I am so proud of myself for focusing on taking care of yourself. You're proud of yourself for how far that you've come. When you can use those words to describe yourself, you've completely changed your life. 
You opened the email with the struggle. You ended the email with pride and what you have done to change your life. That's what focus will do. That's what staying mindful to an attendance goal, that's what staying mindful to whatever your your goals are can get it done. Candy, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations on the, the mindset change where you've turned to yourself as being proud of yourself. That is what this is all about. You can live the rest of your life being pride, you know, having pride and, and knowing that whatever you want to accomplish, you can accomplish. Alice, congratulations. Following that up, uh, just before we went live on the show, Deborah from Chicago wrote in and said, I hit Wonderland at my way in on Thursday. Deborah, congratulations to you as well. Looks like we have a couple Alices in the crowd tonight. Next up, out of Connecticut, Corey writes in, and Corey's joining us live on Facebook as well, as she says, Hi, Mike. I discovered your podcast in the early days, but my mind was not there yet, and I wasn't willing to listen. I stayed subscribed, but I never pressed play. In the first half of 2017, I lost 20 pounds, but then kept gaining and losing the same three pounds for June, July, August, September, and October. I was not working the plan, not tracking properly, and while I was sticking to old habits. I fell off the plan officially. I let my eating get out of control, and I stopped attending meetings. Though I I actually didn't cancel, though. And as an aside, I first joined Weight Watchers at 18 years old. I'm now 46, and I've joined countless times along the way, never really getting beyond 25 or so pounds off before falling off the wagon. Not to mention the myriad of fad diets of Atkins to South Beach to Keto along the way. Well, anyway, in December, I really started evaluating how I felt. I am normally quite active, walking several miles a day. My hus- husband and I attend a ton of concerts, which entail standing for hours and hours. I noticed that I was starting to have a lot of foot, knee, and back pain. I was having a hard time just getting up and down without being stiff. My weight was starting to make me feel my 46 years, and that's just not acceptable. I can no longer ignore it. My clothes that had become loose from the 20 pounds lost were tight again, and I was uncomfortable. It was time to take charge. I went back to Weight Watchers shortly before Christmas, and I discovered that I had gained back 16 of the 20 pounds that I lost in 2017. I knew I had to do something different and dig deep. Shortly after starting again, and with renewed determination, I rediscovered your podcast. So often I find myself shouting, yes, yes, yes. I have now set attendance goals for both meetings and movement. Before, I would play the game of not going to a meeting if I knew there might be a gain. Well, never again. I am now asking myself, will this get me to goal? Before I make a stupid, let's get me to go before I make a stupid decision. I am now tracking everything. My weigh-in day is Saturday. Previously, I just eat whatever I wanted on Saturdays, and I would assume my weeklies would cover it. Well, never again. Since following those promises to myself since the beginning of the month, I have lost ten. pounds for a new total of 14.6, and I'm getting closer to my initial 20. I have much more to lose, but getting back that first 20 pounds back is my short-term focus. Thank you for your inspirational words and podcasts that found me at just the right time when both my mind and my heart were ready to hear it. Corey, Great job. And uh, I actually just misplaced your second email that you sent in today that gave me a little bit of an update on how well you're doing. But I, I wanted to just share with you that I'm incredibly proud of you. Way to dig in. Way to say, you know, I want to get this done. Way to understand that the mind controls the journey. I love the fact that that you've been a subscriber to the podcast for, for a little bit of time, but never really took the moment to press play. I believe that's true to, for, for so many folks. And, and there's, a, there's a mental piece of this that we really have to conquer. We really have to dig into to figure it out. 
So welcome to the podcast. An amazing job here that you've done. Uh, you know, one of the things that I do is, is we have an email newsletter on fatdag.com. And, and one of the things that you, made, you reminded me of when I opened your email was so many, so many people subscribe to the newsletter. It, it's amazing to see how many people want that inspiration. And then slowly but surely, one by one, I see them come in with an unsubscribe. It's very similar to what you said is that that mentally you just weren't ready to hear the message. And so my heart breaks every time someone unsubscribes because what I know is at one point in their journey, they were looking for inspiration. And then this email came in and their mind was not in such the right place or they or they found some other reason to get distracted. And then all of a sudden the focus is lost. And when you lose the focus, you know, we understand that that's a great definition of not working the plan, not tracking properly and reverting back to bad habits. And and when you fall off the plan, so often it's very difficult for us to get back. But Corey, you did it. You found your way back because you knew what the prize was. You knew that you could do it. You started tapping into feelings that you hadn't had before. And, you know, a lot of us equate that to old age. You know, we, we think as we get older that our knees are supposed to hurt, our back is supposed to hurt, we're not supposed to be able to stand for long periods of time. And then the reality is, is, is in so many ways that that could be true, but, but more often not, more often than not, what it is, is we haven't taken care of our body well enough to carry us to, you know, well into old age. We can eat right. We can be healthy. And we have to ask that question that you said is, is, does this align with my goal? Will this get me to goal? Is the activity that I'm doing, will it get me to goal? Is the food that I'm getting ready to choose, will that get me to goal? And when you ask yourself that question, you, you, you there, it becomes very easy to stay focused. And so you don't lose 21.6 pounds on accident. You lose that by staying focused. You, you lose that by staying disciplined. You lose that by setting attendance goals for both your meetings and your movement. The game of, of playing a game with the scale of, of thinking that you're going to weigh in heavy so you don't go to the meeting does not work. Because what happens is at the, at the time when you need the most inspiration, you're giving up on that meeting room, hoping to come back a week later, hoping that you're going to find some other inspiration and lose the weight. And generally what happens is, is that second week makes it even harder because as the slip starts going further and further and further, and then we say, we'll skip the next meeting and we'll try and make it up later. And, and very, very often that doesn't happen. So yes, the attendance goal is the key. Set an attendance goal for your meeting. No matter what, you never miss a meeting. No matter what, you get up and you do some sort of movement to get you going. If you follow on fatdag.com, you'll see I weigh in every single day. I do that regardless of what I did the night before. I know the scale is just data. And I've told you before is that is when I hop on the scale, that is my good morning to you. That is my check-in. That is me saying, I've got this. It doesn't say I'm perfect. It doesn't say I'm following the plan <laughs> accurately. It says I've balanced everything in my life and I'm still checked in saying good morning with an attendance goal. So that's the same thing that you've done, Corey, and that's what's absolutely gotten you down where your mind and your heart were ready to hear it and you're now working the plan. I love the piece where you said that you will, in all capital letters, do this. And lastly, I want to address the, the, the Saturday thing, because I think that's common with so many folks, is, is that we, we think our weigh-in day is the day to either, either go off the plan or, or eat our weeklies, or, or certainly you can eat your weeklies, but, but to eat more than our weeklies and just think that we just wipe them out to cover it. And that doesn't really work that way because a couple things happen is, is if you build a cheat day into your plan, if you build a day in where you're not tracking and you're not, you're not being accountable, we've talked about before the difference between maintaining your weight and losing weight for the week is roughly six points a day. And so you could very easily blow through that, that set of points and put yourself in a weight maintenance mode versus the weight loss mode by simply that one day of overdoing it on food. In addition to that, the bigger danger is, is your body continues to rely on the, on the food that you're craving, and you never truly break the bad habits. 
You're keeping those bad habits on life support. And I'm glad to see that you said no more. Way to be accountable, way to stay focused, way to dial in, way to dig deep. And thanks for writing in. Corey, it's an honor to walk this journey with you. Thank you for being here. 21.6. Let's go for 22. A little bit of attendance, and you can get to 22. If you can get to 22, you can get to 23. And you can go as far as you want on this journey. Great, great job. Out of Atlanta, Kristen writes in and says, Dear FitDag, I've been wanting to write to you for the podcast for a while now. I restarted this journey for the sixth time back in November. I saw a picture of myself holding the pie that I made for my family, and I just thought, well, wow, I I look like someone's fat grandma who lives to bake for others. I'm only 30 years old, so this was a hard blow to my ego. My awesome stepmom was doing Weight Watchers, and I saw her making good choices at Thanksgiving dinner. Her dedication made me realize I had just been making excuses and I was sick of feeling like the fat girl in every room and sick of hating photos of myself. I'm a teacher and a grad student and pretty much my life has revolved around work for the last six years. I always thought I didn't have time to work out or or cook, etc. But but this time I decided that if I have to eat, It takes just as long to make a sandwich and a salad at home as it would to run across the street to Chick-fil-A. So I might as well just make better choices. Every meal is an opportunity for success if I simply choose well. Anyone with any amount of free time or not can do that much. Also, if I have time to watch 30 minutes to an hour of TV every night, I can get off my butt and I can go walk with my husband instead. So I made some changes consciously with the understanding that I would just do my best around my crazy schedule. I was also giving myself dessert every night as a reward for my stressful days. So I decided that dessert didn't need to be a candy bar, ice cream, or something junky. Those were special treats. And if I wanted dessert at night, I could have a strawberry or a mango instead. With this change of attitude, things started really well. Then I found your podcast, also thanks to my stepmom, and it got even better. Attendance goals. Why are there not gyms that reward people for attendance goals? This made something really click for me, and since I set my first one on January 3rd, I've worked out more consistently than ever before in my life. Binge eating is no longer a thing in my life because of your mantra, do I want this? Or do I want goal? It's in the forefront of my mind. I have turned down cupcakes, cookies, and more for my students. I've had bags of candy in my classroom that I didn't touch before class celebrations. This is a new me. And your wingmanship has made a huge impact on how I look at my weight loss journey, how I treat myself, and and how I take care of myself first now. I take care of me before my job. Never before have I been at goal, but now I am there mentally and just waiting for the scale to catch up to my brain. I became Alice yesterday, and I hit my 10%. For the last five years, I've been trying to lose weight. I tried low carb, counting calories, and more, but there was a mental block holding me back. I always get stuck at 201 or 202. So being in Wonderland for the first time is for so in so long is a huge success for me. And I just wanted to thank you for all the help that you provided along the way. Please know that my long-term goal, once I finish grad school and have the time, is to become a leader because I hope someday I can help others on their journey just like you are doing for so many of us. You are such a role model, and as a teacher, it has always been my goal to help others, so I aim to get there, too. Lastly, I wanted to give a shout-out to my wingettes, Ellen, Amanda, Julie, and Kara. These ladies are in a text group with me and are my daily support. We are all doing Weight Watchers together, and it makes this journey so much more fun. Thank you for your service to our country, to Weight Watchers, and good Continued focus. Kristen from Atlanta. Starting weight 220.6, current weight 199. 
Gold weight, well, 165 for now. We'll see where it goes. Uh, Kristen, congratulations. Uh, the wingettes rock, right? I agree with that. Uh, Facebook's chiming in, letting us know that the wingettes are awesome. Alice, congratulations on getting into Wonderland. At the same time you hit your 10%, what an amazing combination that is. If you've, if you've made it to Wonderland and hit your 10%, you can do whatever you want to do. If you've hit 10%, you can hit goal. It doesn't happen by accident. You focused your way down. You dialed in. You got it done. You can hit goal. Congratulations. One thing you have to do, though, is you have to quit trying to lose weight. For the last five years, if you've been trying to lose weight, you have to now focus on being healthy. If you focus on being healthy, you focus on being fit, if you focus on making the right choices, if you focus on understanding that every meal is an opportunity for success, if you simply choose it, that is the victory, and that is what you focus on, and that will carry your body to a healthy, fit weight for the rest of your life. It's an amazing accomplishment that you've done, and, and it's awesome to see that as your family is doing this together, that as your, you know, your, your stepmom was doing Weight Watchers, you saw her making good choices. It really made you realize of just how well you were or weren't following the plan. And, and the making of excuses becomes very clear when you watch somebody else with so much discipline and focus being the prize. When they show you how awesome it is to, to be at a goal weight, when, to, to work the plan and to, and to be focused on what they're doing, it, it, it's a contagious feeling. It, it's why I've, I've gotten rid of a couple terms that in my journey, I, I don't struggle. I, I don't think this is hard. I think there are days where it's, it's fun. I think there are days where there's a challenge. But, but when you call it a struggle, no one else wants to join you. When you say lifetime is more difficult, well, well why would we want to go through all this trials and tribulations just to make a program even more hard? It's way more fun to be the prize. It's way more fun to celebrate. It's way more fun to tell you how amazing I feel. It's way more fun to show you how amazing and the things that I'm able to do because I want to encourage you to get there just like your stepmom was doing for you. I'm going to repeat it a second time, but where you say every meal is an opportunity for success if I simply choose well. If that doesn't sum up the entire program, I don't know what does. That's all there is to it. At every meal, you have the opportunity to be successful. It's right there in front of you. You ask yourself, do I want this or do I want to make goal? You don't always have to be perfect, but you always have to ask. And you always have to be accountable for the actions that follow. Thanks again to your stepmom for recommending the podcast. It's, uh, it's, it's an honor when I hear that, when people tell me that they share the podcast, because it, it just continues to reinforce that, that what we're doing is worth it. What we're doing is absolutely worth it, and that's why I will continue to be a Weight Watcher leader. You know, certainly, as you know, the, my views and my opinions for the podcast are my own, but, but being a leader is one of the coolest things I've ever done week after week watching people come in and, and talking them through their journey and, and looking at them and saying, you can do this and, and looking them in the eye with true belief that the program works and, and convincing them that you can do this. It's an honor to be able to do that. And, and Kristen, I, I hope you have the opportunity to do that as well. Last but not least, your amazing support group. We opened your email with them, the Wingettes. Um, how cool is that, that you have an amazing support group where you can text back and forth? You know, we know there's Connect. Connect is an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing community of people getting it done. We have the Wise Wingman Facebook group, another amazing, uh, amazing community. But at some point, we need to get right down to, to two to three to four people in our lives that are doing exactly what we need to do and holding each other accountable. That level of support is what will carry you to goal. And when you get there, you sign up, you ask to be a leader, you, you, you devote your time and energy to, to watching people completely change their life. And I assure you, there's nothing like it. Congratulations on your 10%. Alice, congratulations on getting into Wonderland. You clearly can do this. Goal weight, who knows? 
You know, how about a goal feeling? How about you'll know when you get there, when you step on the scale for the very last time and you say to yourself, huh, you know what? I actually don't feel like losing any more weight. I like the way I look. I like the way I feel. That is goal. Out of Rochester, New York, Sharon writes in with the subject of lifetime. And she says, thanks for your podcast and your never ending support of those of us just trying to live our best lives. I am a Weight Watcher 3 Peter. I reached goal in the early 90s, in my mid-20s, and I maintained for a short period of time. I failed because once I reached goal, I returned to my former ways of eating, and I relied only on exercise to maintain. Well, that pretty much worked until I injured myself while running. I gained the weight back, and then more, and more, and more. I was more than 100 pounds over goal when I started Weight Watchers again online in 2012. I lost 40 pounds, and then I just stopped. Not really sure why, but I lost my motivation. On October 31st, 2016, I got an email from Weight Watchers inviting me back. At that point, I was 52 years old, 284 pounds, 137 pounds over my goal weight of 147 I was on medication for high blood pressure, and I was starting to have problems with asthma. I hadn't had any issues with asthma since I was a teenager. I was miserable and afraid that I was killing myself with food. I joined as an online-only member to give it one last try, but I knew I had to establish a healthy relationship with food instead of relying on exercise to lose weight. Something clicked. And since that day, I haven't looked back. I have tracked every single day since November 1st, 2016 without fail. I did not, I did, I did not exercise except for aiming for 10,000 steps a day, and it took me a while to work up to that. Sometimes I met that goal, sometimes I didn't, and as the weight fell off, I was more and more determined. My doctor told me she would be pleased with a goal weight of 175 pounds, and I agreed. That's 15 pounds above the Weight Watcher maximum for my height and 28 pounds above my original Weight Watcher goal weight of 147. I thought that was a sustainable number number to settle for. I started my meetings in May of 2017 when my daughter wanted to join Weight Watchers with me. I made my goal of 175 pounds in January of this year and I achieved lifetime February 21st, 2018. My doctor has cut my blood pressure medicines in half. I have a family history of heart disease, so I may never be completely off them, but I know I am doing my part to control what I can, and that's okay. I'm happy with this physical transformation, but it's slowly sinking in that I have made an even bigger mental transformation. I have realized that I don't have to settle for this weight. Yes, I'm proud of losing more than 110 pounds. And yes, I, I like the way that I look, but I am not at the point where I can stand on the scale or look in the mirror and know that I've finished losing weight. I can set the bar higher because I am in control. I know that I can return to an ideal BMI and I'm going to do it. I don't have what my final goal is, but I will know it when I get there because I believe in myself. I have changed my relationship with food, and I am slowly adding in a small amount of exercise back into my life because I want to, not because I must do it to make up for poor eating. I wanted to share this with you because so many of your posts and your podcasts resonate with me. This is a lifelong journey that I'm completely in control of. I'm excited to challenge myself beyond my current goal. Thank you. Thank you for being my wingman. Uh, Sharon, congratulations on, uh, on achieving lifetime, but more importantly, congratulations on understanding what the journey truly is about. It's absolutely not about satisfying a number on the scale. You know, I asked someone the other night, we were in a chat, and I said, are you doing this for the scale, or are you doing this for you? Are you doing this to satisfy a program requirement, or are you doing this for you? If you're simply doing it to satisfy a program, if you're simply doing it to satisfy a scale, 
Well, then when those two things don't respond, you have to figure out what it is you are really trying to do. And when you do it for you and you're happy with the mental transformation, that's when you'll stick around for the lifetime. Way to be the prize and and way that in May of 2017, you and your daughter joined together. How awesome is that? You're completely changing your life. You're going to get back to a normal BMI. You absolutely can do it. You've proven more than once that this plan works. You've proven more than once that you can do whatever you want to do. How cool is it that you got an email that started this whole thing off and the email said, welcome back. And more importantly, as you understood your why and you knew that you wanted to do it. There's focus in this, in this email. And, and the focus is that you wrote in is that you knew what you had going on. You knew you had to establish a healthy relationship with food. And, and what's interesting is for so often, we all know that. You know, there is no secret to how to do this journey. You have to burn more calories than you consume. It's that simple, right? You have to make a healthy relationship with food. It's that simple, right? Well, certainly the reality is, is as life gets in the way, we have to then deliberately focus on those efforts. We can do that. It takes focus. And when you get that focus, something clicks. And since that day, I can tell you were dialed in. You've tracked every single day since November without fail. You did exercise every day to 10,000 steps every single day. That is focus. That is waking up every single day wanting to get it in, get it done. I love how you ended or followed up the next paragraph with, sometimes I met the goal, sometimes I didn't. It reemphasizes the fact that you don't have to be perfect on this plan. You can lose 110 pounds by staying focused and not perfect. But if you try and be perfect, then when when the first opportunity to not be perfect comes along, it's very easy to give up. I love what you said is that you're now working exercise back into your plan because you want to. Because you want to. Think about that. And when you think about what you want and you want to be healthy and you understand that exercise makes you healthy, it doesn't help you lose weight. It helps you reframe your mind. It gets your mind in the right place where you will be able to do whatever you want to do. And, and, you know, I I see so often, you know, folks think, you know, in general that, you know, we, we exercise to punish our body for the food that we ate instead of exercising to celebrate all the amazing things that our body can do. Just as you you saw earlier is when you injure yourself, if you rely on exercise solely as your weight loss mechanism, as you injure yourself, you have to have a plan B, and that's not the time to start a whole new plan when you're battling an injury as well. Way to get it done. I'm very, very proud of you. Congratulations on reaching lifetime. Congratulations on understanding that, that your doctor goal, which is an amazing goal in itself, that, that your doctor goal is not exactly where you wanted to be. Now, certainly it's it's absolutely doable. That's why the program exists. That's why we accept it. But you understand that that is not where you truly are capable of being. And now as you work to eat healthy, be healthy and work out, that mental transformation, that mental transformation is what got you to goal. Because you understand what goal truly is. And the true goal is that you can live healthy and happy for the rest of your life. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you for your emails. It's an honor to celebrate with you. Folks, what is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com. Click on Wise Advice Podcast to send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebrations because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. Did you hop on the scale and that first number is a one? Are you Alice? Can we call you Alice in Wonderland? When you can be proud of what you're doing, when you understand that, that everything that you're doing, the results that you're getting are a direct result of your actions, not someone else's actions. When your actions are moving the needle, when your actions are getting it done, and you understand that it's you doing it, you ought to be, you ought to be happy. You ought to be beaming with pride. And when you can admit that, and you can share that with the thousands of people who listen to this show... 1.8 million downloads and counting. When you can take a moment to share that and say, I'm proud of what I'm doing, 
and you understand the true meaning of that, you can get it done. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Thank you for listening to the Wise Advice Podcast. Did you know for as little as $1 a month, you can take the next step as a wingman and support the show? Visit fatdag.com, click on Become a Patron today.